Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with the Bulls Sturmvogel. It's a beautiful looking e-bike with the made in Germany Broza mid-drive and a made in Germany BMZ integrated 650 watt hour battery. So it doesn't actually look like an e-bike. It just looks beautiful and it rides really well as well. So if you're looking for an attractive looking bike for commuting, urban riding, this is a really great bike to consider. It's a tremendous value for a number of reasons, one of which as I already pointed out, it's got the uh, 650 watt hour battery. Most bikes have four or 500 watt hours, so it's a, a really impressive range. It's got a internally geared hub, which means very little maintenance and you can shift while you're stopped, which is brilliant. And again, it's just beautiful looking, very comfortable bike. An amazing value at the uh, current price, which you can get on our website at citruscycles.ca. In fact, you can find all of the detailed specs. You can find our contact information to ask us questions. You can order it to be shipped anywhere in Canada. Or if you want to come try it here in uh, beautiful Ladysmith or anywhere uh, on Vancouver Island or the lower mainland, contact us about our Try at Home program. Again, you can find all the details on our website at citruscycles.ca. So let me step through, through some of the uh, incredible features of this bike that make it a really good value and talk about who this bike is for. And like I said, all the detailed specs are on our website. So certainly one of the highlights is the looks of this bike. Um, we do have the Broza mid-drive uh, in the uh, bottom uh, bracket here. Uh, the Broza system is very quiet. Um, it's very reliable, obviously, a uh, German-made product, and it really doesn't look like much. When you look at it, the uh, front chain ring here is really hiding the fact that you've got a mid-drive motor in there. A mid-drive helps balance the weight by putting it in the middle, and uh, it's also a very natural riding sensation because with the Broza system, it is uh, sensing your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling. The speed of the bike, you can see there's a speed sensor back there, and your cadence, and it makes adjustments on all of those things to really match what you're expecting from the bike. So you don't have to worry about it being jerky, it's really smooth, you don't have to worry about unexpected power, it really gives you the power that you're expecting. Uh, now, because it is driving the chain, that means when you change gears on your internally geared hub here, that's actually having an impact on the motor. So it really helps you climb hills. It's like the transmission in a vehicle. When you go into an easier gear, the motor is then in also in an easier gear and going to help you climb that hill. We also, as I mentioned, have a battery from uh, BMZ. It's integrated into the down tube here, but it is removable. So there's a, a key that you would put in on the other side here. Now, once you put the key in to unlock it, make sure you either remove the key right away or just don't turn the pedals because the pedals here could actually collide with the key and bend it. But once you open that up, you release this latch and you can remove the battery. Now, you can remove the battery to charge it off the bike, but you can also charge the battery on the bike. You just open up the charging clap here, and there you go. And that is a CAN bus uh, charging system. It's magnetic uh, plug, which is really cool. So if you do leave uh, the battery in the bike to charge it, and you trip over the charging cable, not to worry, it's not gonna knock the bike over. It's simply going to release the plug. Now to round out the, the subtleness really of the Broza system, the fact that it doesn't really look like an e-bike, the display is uh, very compact, very discreet, very easy to use. You can see that the display itself is actually the uh, control panel. So you press the plus button here to get a higher level of assistance and the bottom part of the display looks like a, a down arrow, uh, reduces the assistance and you can reduce it all the way to off. There's four levels and you can still ride the bike with the assistance off. It rides quite well and, and is quite smooth and that's going to show you uh, your speed even if the assistance is off. And we also can see the battery charge down here and you can also press the button on the battery to see the charge. So if you've got the battery off the bike and want to know how much charge you have, you've got that option as well. So then as far as the bike components go, as I mentioned and keep saying over and over again, it is a lovely looking bike. Um, we've got some really nice clean lines and part how they've done that is we do have a rigid fork on the front here. Now fortunately, they've put these fantastic Schwalbe Fac Frank tires on. They're about a 2.35 inch wide tire. Uh, I think they're 26 inches. Uh, they have a high degree of puncture resistance. They have the K-Guard level three, which is uh, great. And 
they are balloon tires. And so, aside from being beautiful and matching the brown accents of the bike here, a balloon tire is a tire that you can put a high volume of air in at low pressure. And so what that does is when you go over bumps, the tire actually deforms and absorbs that bump rather than transmitting it through the frame to you riding. And uh, so that really helps smooth things out. Even though you don't have a suspension fork, the types of bumps and vibrations you would typically get on a commuter in a city ride, um, these uh, balloon tires really do a good job of absorbing. The other thing that helps a little bit here, and maybe it's just my imagination, but I think these beautiful leather look grips, they're nice and soft, they're ergonomic, they seem to help as well dampen some of the uh, vibrations. We've got a nice uh, swept back handlebar here, uh, makes it, gives you a very upright, comfortable riding position. And that's what you want if you are riding in city traffic. You want a high degree of visibility that you can look around and see what's going on. And you're able to do that with the riding position on this bike. Uh, in addition to these leather look grips, we also have this brown leather look saddle with these uh, rivets. Somebody asked me once, aren't those uncomfortable? Well, you don't actually sit on the rivets. Uh, you're sitting more forward and there's a little bit of padding, but not a whole lot. You could change the saddle if you wanted to. If you did that, you just need to remove the integrated light off of the saddle rails and uh, put it on your uh, new saddle. Um, and the lighting is integrated and runs off of the main battery. You can see you've got a nice bright front light here as well. And um, the nice thing about the integrated lighting is that you don't have to worry about forgetting to bring your lights if you leave in the morning and come home at dark. And you don't have to worry about remembering to charge them because they are running off of the main battery. So that's great. Uh, rounding out our uh, look at the top here of the bike, your cockpit, we do have visual indicator of your gears. As I mentioned, it is a Shimano Alfini internally geared hub with trigger shifters. So while we are stopped, I can actually shift into an easier gear and that's brilliant. So if you are commuting and uh, you stop suddenly and you didn't get a chance to downshift, not a problem. While you're stopped, you can downshift. Of course, on a regular bike, you can't downshift uh, while you're stopped because the chain has to be moving for the derailleur to move it up and down the gears. With an internally geared hub, all the gears are inside and so it can be shifted while you're stopped. The other benefit of this is in terms of maintenance, you don't have to worry about your derailleur getting bashed or uh, getting out of whack. Uh, Cleaning maintenance is very simple. You just keep the chain clean and oiled. You're not having to worry about your uh, cassette and derailleurs. And wear as well becomes less of an issue. You're not going to have to replace the cassette derailleur and chain as often because the chain is uh, not jumping up and down a cassette like you would with a regular cassette derailleur. So it really helps prolong the life. It reduces the amount of time you have to spend on maintenance and uh, really gives you a great riding uh, experience because of the fact that you can shift while you're stopped. So that's a really nice uh, thing to have. We do have Shimano uh, uh, hydraulic disc brakes up here and uh, they're very responsive with a lot of modulation. I think we have a 180 millimeter uh, rotor in the front and a 160 on the back. While I'm down here, I should point out the bolts has actually gone and used a through axle on the front here with a quick release. So that's awesome. That really gives you a lot of confidence. The only way for your wheel to fall off is if you take the axle all the way out. Helps with the stiffness of the bike and the handling. And, you know, it's really nice to see. Um, so we've got yeah, the hydraulic brake on the back here with, the, I think it's a 160 millimeter. We have uh, integrated kickstand. And uh, although the bike doesn't come with fenders, and I, I think, I think Bulls, I don't know, if it were me designing this bike, you know, it's so beautiful that I didn't want, I, you know, they wouldn't want to put fenders or a rack on, but it's easy enough to add. So you can see we have raisons here that you can use for a rack, and we also have uh, fender mounting points on the front and the rear. So you can add fenders and you can add a rack. You already have the lights, and so you really have a well put together uh, commuting, kind of uh, city uh, e-bike that uh, doesn't look like an e-bike that is fun to ride, it's very attractive looking, and uh, really has a lot of great features for the price. Uh, we do have a reflective uh, striping in the sidewall here um, of the tires, which is good for visibility, and this nice bright white color also helps with visibility in city traffic, which is great. Um, we don't have a chain guard. I was trying to think of anything that I would change about the bike. Again, 
Uh, it's hard to add a chain guard and make it look nice. It just it looks awesome. So what you may want to do if you're commuting and you're worried, I mean, we have a chain guide here that really is going to make it very unlikely that you're going to get anything caught in the in the chain up front here. Um, but your pant leg may occasionally brush on the chain, uh, so you may just want to get a, a Velcro strap or something to put around your pant leg. But it is a nice, good, uh, solid chain guard up there. Um, we have uh, pedals, Welgo pedals, are a nice quality pedal. Um, they don't have metal pins on them, but they do have kind of some gripping points here that uh, may make it uh, help your foot. And again, some some kind of rubber striping here that's going to help you not slide off. I like riding with platform pedals with pins, but on a commuting bike, I can see why you wouldn't want that. It could really hurt if you uh, hit your shins on it. So this is actually a good choice for this type of bike, uh, those pedals, that's uh, a good option on there. But of course, the touch points of the bike, you can easily change the pedals, the grips, the saddle. The saddle doesn't have a quick release, and again, on a city bike, that's not uh, unusual. You don't want somebody to be able to take your saddle very easily. And of course, you could change that out to a locking one as well. So hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. If you have any questions about this you'd like to give it a try, uh, you have any comments, just on, head on over to our website at citruscycles.ca. I'm Kelly and this is the Bulls Sturmvogel. That's pretty windy today. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear my commentary as I ride, but I'll give it a try. Just trying it out on level two right now. And uh, you know, the amazing thing about this Broza mid drive is it's so quiet. Now, I suppose part of it is the wind noise is making it hard to hear, but it is just a very quiet, very smooth experience. And I think that's, you know, one of the defining features of this bike is it's really a beautiful bike that does not look like an e-bike. And when you're riding it, it doesn't really feel like an e-bike. It just feels like, you know, you're really strong. So on this straight stretch here is doing 25 to 28 on level two. I love having the internally geared hub, by the way, there. I was just able to click through three gears while I was stopped. I didn't uh, downshift before stopping, and that's one of the nice things about an entry like your top is you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to increase the assistance for the hill here. Cornering with these nice big wide tires gives me a lot of confidence. Not worried about uh, losing traction. Get up to level four. And climb right up now this is where you do hear the motor you know when you're climbing and you're in level four um, it's a fairly low pitch compared to say the Bosch system which is a little bit of a higher pitch so that can give the perception of it being a quieter system because the hum isn't as loud now I keep trying to uh, upshift here a few times and uh, I haven't been paying attention to my visual indicator there telling me that I am at the maximum speed already. So I'm noticing that, uh, you know, 32, 34 is uh, kind of the maximum speed that you can really pedal at a comfortable, I guess I could do a little bit more, maybe 35 or 36, but once you get past that speed, the gearing just doesn't give you a lot. You're basically just going to find that you're pedaling um, too quickly. So I came down this way because it's got a lot of broken pavement, a lot of potholes and things like that. And I really wanted to know how well these fat Frank tires would handle it. They are a balloon tire and uh, you know, Schwalbe, uh, here's some gravel over here we can try. Schwalbe's done some studies and uh, oh, here on the gravel, it's no problem. You, have, you know, they're almost, I think it's 2.35 inches wide, which uh, 
you know, it gives you lots of stability, lots of control. So even if I, you know, go on and off between pavement and gravel, no problems at all. So definitely uh, the wide tires are great for gravel. Um, anyways, back to what I was saying, sorry for the interruption there. Um, Shelby did a study where they found that in urban environments, a balloon tire can be as effective as a front suspension fork in absorbing uh, some of the bumps. And I am noticing, you know, that these are doing really well on this type of uh, broken pavement and uh, potholes and stuff. Definitely dampens it. It's a little bit of a different sensation with a suspension fork. You know, it's really going to kind of go up and down to absorb, say, potholes. Um, with the balloon tires, you're not really going to get that, but it's all the rest of the stuff, it's really going to kind of absorb. The tire is going to deflect a bit and absorb that for you. So it's actually a really smooth experience on this bike. Here's another great example of when it's nice to have that internally geared hub. I did downshift coming down that hill, so I can do that now. Yeah, this is a really fun, enjoyable bike to ride. It's a really interesting riding position because I am upright. Like, it's really great visibility as far as traffic goes. I'm still slightly forward in a kind of a sporty way. I'm not really sure how to describe it. You'd really have to come and ride it. And these, you know, these curved back, slip back handlebars, Normally I'm not a fan. I find that they make the steering a little bit twitchy, but it's working really well. I don't know if it's because it goes forward and then back that my riding position, my hand position is still kind of close to the port. I'm not sure, but you know, it works really well. It's quite a comfortable bike, comfortable riding position, nice, comfortable grips. I don't mind the saddle, it is a bit hard, uh, but it looks great, that kind of leather look, it's really nice. Built-in lighting is great to, for visibility and traffic here, and you know, even the white frame helps with visibility. And like I said, I feel fairly visible riding as well. Or I have a lot of visibility riding, so I can see traffic. So we'll head up some hills next. The Barosa system is very responsive to your input. So it's, uh, you know, with the torque sensor, the harder I pedal, the more power I get. It's very responsive that way. riding environments, having that internally geared hub being able to downshift while I'm stopped. It's uh, really great and that's you know really where this bike would shine is in an urban commuting kind of environment. Now with this uh, integrated 650 watt hour battery you know the bike doesn't look like an e-bike which is sometimes convenient city environment but 650 watt hours is just massive so the range on this bike is incredible so it would be a decent touring bike as well you could throw some fenders and racks and uh, really ride a long way as long as 
you know you're want, not wanting to get your speed up really high that's definitely a challenge with the gearing now of course you could adjust that you could uh, change out the sprocket on the front there maybe i'd have to do some more checking into that for you to see if we could do something with the gear ratios okay a bit of a hill here i'll put it up onto uh level four now your dealer can customize those levels for you in terms of the amount of assistance that it provides at each level really having no problems up this hill got a steeper one coming up my GPS is working on the camera, which sometimes it isn't. You'll be able to see what the gradient of these hills are. I had really no problem climbing up there. This next one's going to be quite a bit steeper. Actually, I'll... Uh, Put an even steeper one ahead. I'll go down it and then come back up it for you. See, I'm always spoiled when I take bikes like this for a test ride that have the hub. Because then I get lazy and I, I don't focus on shifting. And I get back on my mountain bike and, oh, all right, I'm going to have to remember to downshift before I stop. So it is really nice. You know, I am finding the bike comfortable and smooth, despite the lack of a suspension fork. Really, these uh, fat Frank tires are doing smoothing everything out. They look good, too. Okay, this is a steep descent, and I'll turn around and come back up it for you. Uh, yeah, here we go. Breaking. All right, let's take it back up. And uh, really loving these fat Frank tires. They're great. They track really well. Nice and smooth. Nice and wide, giving you confidence. Handling. All right, put her up on the level four. Into easier gear here. Not even down into my easiest gear. Try shifting again. One more. I don't even have to go down my easiest and climbing up no problem. In fact, I'm going to have to shift again here. There we go. Uh, my display is saying 13, 14. I'm not sure what the camera's saying. Camera's sometimes a little bit slower to respond because it's GPS. So I'm using the uh, speed sensor on the bike. But really, no problem with that hill. The Brosa system gives you lots of torque. If you're climbing and you've got the gearing, You know, with the mid-drive, you uh, do get the advantage of the internally geared hub. So when you change to an easier gear, that's also affecting the motor. Just notice going over the curb there, that's where you would notice a difference between balloon tires and suspension fork. With the suspension fork, it's going to kind of balance you up and down a bit. Uh, with this rigid fork and the balloon tires, you're also kind of bouncing up and down a bit but in a different way it's a little bit more jarring but uh you know it's likely what you're going to be using this bike for you're not going to be going off a lot of curbs and when you are just be prepared for it yeah i'm surprised at how uh, aggressive i can be with the uh, handling on the bike i'm not feeling like i need to slow down for cornering or anything like that or Basic maneuvers. You know, it handles really well. I am liking the trigger shifters. A lot of times on an internally geared hub, they'll put a twist shift on. Some people really like that. Some people have a hard time transitioning to that from trigger shifters. So if you're used to trigger shifters, you'll, you'll like this. It's actually really nice.
Yeah, between wind noise, traffic noise, road noise, it's not often that I hear this motor. If I pedal harder and it kicks in harder, I'm still on level four, I need to adjust that. Then you can hear it, it's a low-pitched whining sound. With the Broza system, I find that it is easy to forget, you know, what kind of level of assistance you're in because it's, uh, you know, really dependent on your pedaling. So you definitely do get more assistance on four than on two, but it's more subtle than with the Bosch system. The Bosch system, I know if I've left it on turbo because I'm just cruising along really fast. Uh, with the Broza system, it's not as, doesn't seem as powerful in the top end. Head up another hill here and then head back. This is also fairly steep. I don't think it's as steep as the other hill. I guess if the GPS is working, we'll find out. For a commuter urban city bike, uh, it's really easy to actually get on, on and off and finding the standover height's good. There's a nice drop on the bar. Obviously, it's not a step through or wave style, but it's still fairly low. get used to an internally geared hub you do need to back off on your pedaling a bit especially uh, going up a hill if I'm pedaling under load and try to shift you can hear it ticking I have to very briefly let off my pedaling and then it'll shift and uh, you fairly quickly get used to that and just naturally it's kind of like using a clutch in a vehicle you just naturally back off momentarily while you shift and uh, works quite well The shifting is instantaneous, so you don't have to stop for long, just a very brief moment. And it's fairly easy to get into that habit. transition between uh, assistance at 30, 31, 32, and the cutoff at 33 is really very smooth, very subtle. You really don't notice it, which depending on your personal preference can be a good or a bad thing. <laughs> if you're wanting that, uh, you know, power feeling, so that you, you notice, you know, when the motor stops assisting you. you. You won't find that because this is really very subtle. All right, so this was my uh, ride test of the Bulls Sturmvogel for all the detailed specs for more information to ask any questions head over to our website at citruscycles.ca